Kevin. We talked what, what, about what, the what, New York... What did he just say? In part 11, oh, yeah, we the talked about one. the New York Central streamlined trains of the 1930s. But back then, the New York Central wasn't the only railroad looking into the future. The Union Pacific hailed their M10,000 as tomorrow's train today. Tomorrow's it train today. in 1934 and was America's first streamliner. The M10,000 featured a powerful, fog-piercing headlight, plus a light on the roof that shot straight up. Made of aluminum, the M10,000 was handsome, lightweight, and fast. Top speed was 111 miles per hour. Crowds gathered every time it pulled into town. Just after the Union Pacific introduced their M10,000, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad introduced its hmm. new streamlined speedster, the Burlington Zephyr. The stainless steel Zephyr was the first streamliner to be powered by a diesel engine. That looks like a diesel shape the other In one mythology, did. In mythology, Zephyrus was the god of the west wind, and the west wind must have been blowing in 1934, when the Burlington Zephyr departed the Union Station in Denver, Colorado, and covered the 1,015 miles to Chicago in 785 minutes. That trip set a new world's record, with an average speed of 77.6 miles per hour. In 1960, after carrying yep. passengers for 26 years and covering 3.2 million miles, the Burlington Zephyr made its final stop at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. If you ever get a chance to visit the museum, I recommend it highly. Well, I don't think I will get a chance because cool I live in Oregon. And the Union Pacific Chicago, City Illinois is very every night far. Between Denver in fact, and Eric used to live in Illinois. It was one of the next I remember. generation of streamliners that came after the N10. He lived in Lumber, Illinois, Denver. but because of the government the city of changing Denver's the rule, radical new design his family moved to an automobile's nose with Atlanta, its Georgia. Hood, raised windshield, and wide grill. <laughs> <laughs> the Milwaukee Road hired industrial designer Otto Kuehler to design their Hiawatha, a stylish streamliner named after the hero in Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, The Legend of Hiawatha. The fins on the distinctive end car provided shade for the passengers looking out the windows as the Hiawatha raced along the Mississippi River between Chicago and the Twin Cities. The Twin Cities? What are the Twin Cities? This oh, I know the song. liner is called the Aero Train. It was made by General Motors in 1956. Sorry, I'm just trying to... The Aero Train look. featured a suspension system based on compressed air rather than metal Never springs. Mind. My grandpa says the Aero Train looks like a 1956 DeSoto, whatever that is. Streamliners helped the railroad for a while. But after World War II, airplanes and cars emerged as the way most people traveled. But there we go. But passenger trains just faded away. Sorry, but whatever that is, I remember saying. Hey, I made a video with this. It's a scene from... TV and Theater, The Singing Kid, featuring uh, uh, Jelly Otter and all the other characters that singing with this song playing. But it's more extended. Two comments Samuel Warwick and Andy Eastman 
thought it was very good and very awesome. I was appreciated. If you don't know what it's called, you should look it up on my channel, Guitar Tip. And, and it's titled PBNJ Otter. The Singing Kids Sing with the 900 miles on you. Uh, I got to shorten this. Of the Norfolk and Western 